Yeah, so in this video, let me briefly go over the basic concept of automatic differentiation in PyTorch. And then in the next video, we will take a look at a more comprehensive example, um, training Adeline, the adaptive linear neuron, using uh, yeah, the automatic differentiation concepts in PyTorch. So here, I just want to yeah, show you the computation graph that we talked about in the previous videos in the context of PyTorch. So here in this um, notebook, I should also say, uh, you can find it here on GitHub. I will upload it to GitHub after yeah, finished recording. And I will also add a link to Canvas so you can't miss it in case you want to play around with it. So um, yeah, let me clear the outputs and then execute it one by one. Of course, starting with watermark to see what versions I have. You can also run this with a newer or older version. It should work the same way. Um, so yeah, here I'm importing now the Autograd uh, API, which is the automatic differentiation API. So Autograd, you can think of it as automatic gradient. Um, later on, when we train deeper neural networks, we don't have to use Autograd explicitly. So there are functions that in PyTorch that we define like layers, convolutional layers, and a backward function that will use Autograd under the hood. But I think it's uh, yeah useful to understand how Autograd works because you may also want to use this in some other contexts. All right, so let's import these. And here's the computation graph that we talked about in the previous video. Same thing, so I don't have to go over this again, I think. So here I'm defining this computation graph in PyTorch. So I have my input uh, vector or tensor x, a weight w, a bias b, and the activation, that's the ReLU function. So um, I could have also used these intermediate variables, but I think it would be a little bit overkill. We don't really need to do that. Um, and then there, now there is a attribute here or uh, yeah, value that I said requires grad equals to true. Why am I doing that? That means um, I am interested in computing the gradient or derivative here. If I don't do that uh, by default, it will be if I don't do that, it will be equal to false if I don't do anything. So um, it's actually a good decision by PyTorch because not always when we use PyTorch, we are interested in computing gradients. And now when I run this code here, uh, we can't see it here, but under the hood, it will actually yeah create a computation graph similar to this one and save it internally. And of course, this takes up memory in the computer. So if we don't need a computation graph, it doesn't create it. but we can say we want it because when we want to compute gradients, we need that because we need to know how we can go backward. So in this case, we set requires gradient equals to true. This means uh, we will later on compute the gradient. So please yeah, construct this computation graph. So we can just say, I see that the result is indeed the one that we have here uh, in the figure. Now, um, yeah, we are computing the gradient here. So using this grad function here. So if I go up again, this is something I imported here from the autograd API. So I'm importing this grad function. And now I'm computing the gradient of A with respect to W. And I'm also saying retain the graph, the computation graph. I say uh, do it, like set it to true, so it will retain it. Let's do this. So this computes the gradient of or the partial derivative of a with respect to w. The reason why it's gradient and not partial derivative is it's usually working, of course, with um, yeah uh, vectors and matrices. And this is a very simple example. In this case, we only have scalars, but this is a general function that works also yeah with vectors and matrices. So yeah, the partial derivative here is uh, three. So that's what we also got here, if you recall. So everything makes sense and looks good. So now I'm doing this um, again for the bias unit here. So I get my derivative of one. So also just to double check, this is also what we have here. So everything makes sense. So notice now I didn't set a uh, retain uh, graph to true. So I didn't do it. And if it's not set, then it will actually destroy the computation graph after calling red. So why is that? Usually in the context of a deep neural network, we don't need the graph again until the next forward path pass. And since it's a dynamic uh, framework, the forward pa uh, pass might change. So actually the graph is constructed every time from scratch. 
But that is not a detail we need to be concerned with right now. Uh, what I mentioned or what I wanted to show you here is if I now execute this again, it won't work because we have destroyed the computation graph. It says, uh, or it basically tells us why this error occurs. Is this because we haven't uh, retained the graph? So we can't do it twice. Why is that done? It's usually yeah, to save also memory because imagine uh, you wouldn't do that and you have a deep neural network and you call the forward method multiple times, then in each epoch or in each iteration, the graph would be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So in this case, it's getting destroyed after each update or after each grading computation and then rebuilt from scratch to prevent having it growing infinitely large. Okay, so, but this was yeah, just a basic concept of how this works. Um, I will show you uh, in a later video, next video, how this is done automatically by uh, PyTorch using the backward function. But it's still good to understand like these basic concepts because that's, yeah, it's, it's just from a also scientific point of view, just interesting to understand what's going on under the hood in PyTorch. All right, so here um, also we can, uh, yeah, compute derivatives of arbitrary functions. So if we implement them ourselves, so here I have an if and else, also this would work. Uh, we don't have to define our own Redo function because there is already a Redo function in PyTorch. So I actually skipped over this, but notice I also um, uh, yeah, imported here torch.functional, uh, nn.functional. So I will explain this later on in a later video this uh, today. So this is um, nn is a neural network sublibrary. This contains a lot of convenience functions for neural networks. And functional is the functional API. I will also go over more details about that. Here I'm just using the shortcut F because otherwise it would be much more to type. So PyTorch developers, me included, are lazy. So we use a F as a shortcut for nn.functional. And here's the ReLU function I use from this functional sub API. However, if I wanted to, I can also implement the ReLU function myself. It's quite simple. But if there is already an existing function in PyTorch, I actually recommend using that one because it's usually more efficient than our own implementation. But here, that's just to show you that we could e uh, equally uh, yeah, implement it ourselves. And this would also work. All right, so what I'm showing you here is that even if it's an if and else, like these PyTor uh, Python um, statements, it can also correctly deal with those. And also in case we um, have something where it's not defined, the gradient is not defined, it will also be automatically able to do something reasonable. So for example here, this has the case where um, the input is minus one, w is one, so we have minus one times one is minus one, plus the bias is zero. So the gradient of that one or the partial derivative of um, the ReLU with respect to the input should be um, zero, right? Or actually, it should be not defined, but like we said earlier in, uh, in the lecture, we use the trick so it can be adjusted to zero. And let's see if it is also doing it. Yep, so it's working here. So it's doing something reasonable. It is not crashing here, right? So if I show you my slides again, uh, we said that earlier some time ago here where the derivative is not defined but it would do something reasonable so in that case PyTorch is also doing something reasonable it's not crashing and it works so yeah this was uh, briefly how the automatic differentiation works in PyTorch using this grad function and really what it is doing it's con constructing a computation graph uh, under the hood and then it's, it's going to compute the derivatives for us and in the next video, I will show you how we can do that for a model training for training Adeline.